guys, welcome to the channel. This is Adam at ND72. So as you see, we have my SL55 AMG in the garage. So today, we're going to be doing some more maintenance and fixing stuff that is 100% broken on the car. So as you can see, I have some fancy cool boxes right here. You might be wondering, what are in these boxes? So this is a nice little thing that I bought from FCP Euro that are not really an upgrade, but a necessary item. But they do offer upgrades of these, and now I'm going to discuss why I went with a Lingerfeld factory style of what this part is. But before I even go with that, let's show you the part. It is a motor mount. So, as many of you guys know, when I shot a few videos ago, I did the throttle body video. We went out and did a nice little pull on it. And then in the video, you literally could see my hood denting itself. So you wonder how that happened? My motor mounts are so effing shot that the motor came out, damaged my effing hood. So it damaged it in two spots where it put big dents in there. I'm hoping I can fix that. If not, I might be upgrading to a black series hood, full carbon fiber. Maybe, maybe not. But we want to get rid of that problem once and for all. So there's two ways you usually could do it. You go with the factory style mounts. Now these mounts, they work mediumly good with a lot of torque. They are liquid filled, so when they rip, they dump out liquid and they don't work that well but they make the car a pretty smooth ride so usually your options are three options to go with a factory style I would prefer you go with FCP Euro pick a really good brand it'll last you longer and with the FCP Euro one it's lifetime warranty so when these do rip in a month hopefully not or in two years I get them free again the other option is to go to a black series style of motor mounts so that's basically the black series which a few of you guys know black series cars so they have the Black Series motor mounts, which are stronger and a little bit more tougher, but the cost is up there. These mounts are roughly like 35, 40 bucks. Black Series, I think, are almost triple that mount. And if you're going to spend the money in the Black Series, you could always get a fully upgraded from Creative Steel. They also make them. Their Creative Steel ones, from what I understand, is also a lifetime warranty to the original owner. So if you buy it and they do break on the inserts, they'll send you more inserts to rebuild. Now. Pros and cons. I do have motor mounts that are similar to the Creative Steel ones. I actually have their original ones on my CLK 55. My E55 has the East Coast Euro ones. Those last medium, the company is now out of business. But the Creative Steel is roughly the kind of same idea. Not a fully solid mount. They have little like inserts and all that stuff on the inside. But they do wear out. This is a wearable item. Now I contact them. I was going to buy those actually for this car, but the reason I did not buy them... Nothing against the company. They're just doing very well right now. The wait was about three to five weeks. And my opinion, I wasn't trying to wait three to five weeks to keep driving this car. FGP I had these on the shelf. Literally, I paid the $20 to overnight them. And I have them here within a day. The Creative Steel ones, I would like to get those down the lines. Maybe if these rip again or if I just feel like maybe for my SLK, I'll get them. If anyone watching from Creative Steel wants to help me out, send me a set for my SLK32. I will happily put it on those, but for this car, I don't want to do any more damage right now because my mounts, I'm assuming, are so destroyed, the motor's ripping out, so I needed something ASAP. So that's why I went with just a Lingford, I think that's how you spell, Lingford motor mount, which is a pretty good brand. I got it from FCP Euro, so we're going to start installing these. It shouldn't be that hard to install. Also, what we're going to be doing is doing a little bit of repair on my tranny because I'm having a small leak and we're going to hopefully go find it in something simple. But the main part of this video are motor mounts. So today I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step of how to do it on a SL55 R230. This roughly should be kind of the similar, same way to do it on like an E55, a CLS, so on and so forth. They all have the same mounts to a point, but the accessibility is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to start knocking those out. It should be as simple hair and tools of one specialty tool that I'm going to show you to use that will help you out and then just a 13 millimeter socket and then you do need most likely to lift the motor up a little bit so you could do that with whatever you feel today I have my car in the lift so we're going to be doing it that way you could do this on the floor with a jack it's not that bad of a job I've done it before but let's go through and see how to do this okay first we're going to show you actually how bad these are I'm going to hop in the car I'm going to put it in gear hold the brake and kind of like Give the engine a little bit of power, and we're going to see how the motor actually flips and how bad it is, because it's pretty bad. All right, let's see how bad these motor mounts actually are. I don't know if you can see from this angle. 
<laughs> Let's change angles. Okay, that is horribly bad. You can see how much my motor shoots out of the engine. So it should not be that bad. We also did it in reverse so you can see how much it twists the other way. So what it looks like is my driver's side mount is destroyed. So that sucks, but luckily we have the parts to fix it. So that's the easy way to see if your motor mounts are bad. You're gonna put it in drive. Please do not have a wall in front of you. Put it in drive, put your foot hard on the brake, give it a little bit of gas. And if you see the motor go right, right, most likely bad. It should move a little bit, a little bit, but not as much as mine did because you gotta think when I floor it, that motor is twisting and actually almost ripping out of the car. That's also gonna affect your zero to 60, your 60, 130 times. That really should affect everything because you're losing time when you floor it on that twist. And it just, as you see, damages my hood, if you can see, right there. See, damaged hood. Can you see, look at, right, right there. Cracked my paint even, poor little girl. <laughs> and there's a teeny dimple a little bit farther down. So we're gonna put it up in the air and start pulling this bad girl apart. Okay, so now we're under the car as you can see. Boom, boom, boom. So this is the first one you're gonna have to do. You see this 13 right here? Right up there is the 13 for the bottom of the mounter mount on the passenger side. And then just follow it literally over. Bam, bam, bam. There's the 13 for the driver's side. So first break those loose with your 13 inches literally. A Ratchet, wrench, gun, whatever. Knock it loose. Not like a, not something too powerful because you don't want to break it. Okay, so now this next part. So you see this little whiteness? That's your motor mount. So right above it, in between the headers and here, is another bolt, which is a 16. It kind of sucks to get it, but you have enough room to get your hand in there. But the tool you want to use is right there. You can get these off Amazon. It basically will allow you to go on top of the nut and then put an extension and break it from the bottom. So you have to just basically get a series of extensions over there, some stuff, and then you'll break it loose, and then you can get that nut out. Okay, so you can see this is kind of how you're going to have it. So you have that, then you're going to go all the way up here. Then when you have it over here, it's going to sound weird, but since you're flipped, you're going to actually put your ratchet to tightening, and then it'll break it loose. So just remember, you're looking at the bolt up top, so you'll be spinning it that way. So just knock it out, and then once you get it loose, that ratchet, that little wrench, will help you kind of get everything done. So you're going to do that for both sides, and we'll show you like where I think to pull it out and to lift it. Okay, so now that you got all your bolts off, what I have is my little jack stand over here with a piece of wood on the motor. Also, if you can actually see, make sure your hood is open because now you're going to start lifting your motor. So you could do this with just literally a jack, just pump it up and just be very slow and careful. You want to lift it up little by little. What I'm usually getting is just enough to grab the motor mount and move it around. And then you're gonna to try to find a hole to pull it out. I'm gonna to try to pull this passenger side one out off of the front, but this driver side one, most likely I'm gonna to have to come around back here and pull it out from the back. Uh, I'm probably gonna drop the exhaust down a little bit. Those should be pretty easy. If you have headers, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but I'm gonna to try to get in out of three or four holes. Okay, <laughs> so to do the passenger side, you see this bracket? that holds this line on. Just remove those two 10 mils that are right here and right there, and then it'll come right out. This is the heat shield. This even looks kind of compressed. <laughs> so here's the motor mount that came out. We'll compare it to a brand new one, see if it's collapsed, but now let's knock out the driver's side, which most likely I'm going around to do to the exhaust. Okay, so you're gonna wiggle the exhaust down, which my bolts are all jacked up, so I wasn't gonna show you it because they're different than everyone else's because the previous owner and all that stuff. So see how I have a huge access hole over there? So you're gonna have to remove this rod, just let it hang there, and then the exhaust will drop down a little bit, and then you get your motor mount out. It is a little bit of back and forth and back and forth. So now we're gonna compare my old ones to my new ones, see how much they collapsed. All right, you could just see a huge effing difference in height. You can see how this one's the old one's collapsed, and that one's like the new, like little boop, boop, boop. I was hoping or thinking this was gonna be completely ripped in two, but it really wasn't, so. Now we're gonna put the heat shield back on and put it on. Now what you do have to remember when you're putting it on is reverse order, but these dimples go into little dimples inside the bracket. So just make sure you do that and put Loctite on each bolt and just go slow and it's literally the reverse order. 
shouldn't be that bad. They're going to be a little bit harder to get back in because as you can see, these are collapsed, so we're smaller, but not that bad. All right, so you got everything back together, exhaust put it back up, all my brackets, everything. So they're looking pretty, pretty good in there. One other thing I did notice that I got really lucky, look, right? Let me actually get that light there. Look right on my oil pan right there, apparently. Mine were so bad, it was also rubbing right there on my oil pan. So I got lucky that I didn't damage anything, but that could be causing why my stuff is leaking. Maybe it's shaking stuff loose. So we're gonna lower the car down and see if it's better. Okay, the motor rounds are so much effing better now. So much when I try to twist it, the car literally jolts forward now. So, night and a day difference, but now we're gonna move into the next problem that we're gonna deal with today. Hey guys, do you have an SLK32 or an SL55 or any car with an M112K M11 or M113K? Then I got a product especially for you guys that you're gonna like. What we got right here is Needs Wings Modified Surge Tanks with Crossover Tubes and their fancy Dress Up Kit Hardware. This unit right here will help performance and lower boost in your cars. They make them for M11 3s and M11 2Ks. Now, this product right here is what you need if you're thinking about running stacked pulleys, more boost, or almost anything. This will drop your PSI down without losing any horsepower. So you know what that means? better air intake temperatures, more actual horsepower, and safer for your motor. They bolt right up with no modifications, directly into your factory areas, allow you to actually have boost sensors back there, or run nitrous with a series of bungs. This is such a good product, and I got it on both of my cars. Now, what you might say is like, oh, that doesn't really add too much power. Well, I made a video proving it actually does. And look it, they actually make the engine bay pop and it doesn't look too crazy, it looks almost factory. So if you're thinking about what your next performance mod should be for an M113 or an M112 k motor, modified surge tanks are the way to go. Now, also, if people are still doubting their performance, I'm making a video where it's really showing how much boost drop you do with the same amount of power and, not to toot my own horn, but me, Adam at ND72, I have basically the world's fastest SLK32 in the world, and I'm not running a crazy pulley system. I am technically the second fastest, but the first if you don't count nitrous or meth. So, that kind of says it right there. And this car, all it really has done to it is stacked pulleys, which is a 178, a 65 millimeter, long tube headers, tuning from VTEC, and a lot of needs wings parts. But these. Modified surge tanks were a big part of it to keep my boost down. On my motor, it dropped at 5 PSI, same power. So my temps went way down. So what I think, almost every M11K should have one of these, or you go top mounts, which I did that on my E55, but it's a lot more, a lot more money. So if you're talking about money, you want to purchase one of these, you go to needswings.com, and if you want to save a little bit of money, I got a 10% off coupon code for you. So you go to needswings.com, put your items in your basket, and then off the surge tanks, if you put, where did you hear about us from, put ND underscore 72. That'll get you 10% off surge tanks for M11 2Ks, M11 3Ks, and these cool intakes and crank pulleys for the M11 2K, and some intakes for a C32, and the list goes on. So next time you're on, next time you're on needswings.com, make sure you put anything you're purchasing, where did you hear about us from, ND underscore 72. You'll get 10% discounts on not all their items, but some of their items. And one of them is a Modify Surge Tank Set. So, hope you guys like it. Go make some purchases and back to the video. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be doing with is my slowly leaking transmission. As you can see, I got little drips there. Now, this is going to be a very easy, not so common thing. But my issue is, if you look over here, I am actually, where am I getting this angle? Get over there. Missing one of those bolts. So, I'm missing it because I think the previous owner slam these in with impacts because I'm also, if you look over here, I'm dripping from over here too. And that's because these bolts will never tighten up. I'll even show you, like I'm gonna be very extreme, but it will not tighten up, watch this. Side note, this is not how you're supposed to do it at all. It's just, this is already destroyed. So I'm taking it with my gun. Let me get an angle. It'll never open up. And as you can see, the threads are literally gone. You could see them kind of pulling out over there. 
and on this side they're completely gone so what we're going to do is we're going to healy coil each one of these and then get it nice and tight and clean this all up and refill it up because i have been dripping on my floor over there so we'll knock that out and i'll show you how i do it okay to do any really heel of coil get that out of the way <laughs> project like this you got to start off with making sure you have the right pieces and tools and all that stuff because you really don't want to drill and tap something or heel coil something and it'd be the wrong size so very simple you get your original bolt and then you get yourself either you could go and get a single heel coil but i use i have a kit because this stuff happens with some of these cars I buy from certain shops, we're not going to say any really names, but I had one car who had a lot of F-ups from one shop that is in Florida now that was in Texas, which was really good. We're not going to say the name of the shop, but I think if anyone really knows me, you know what shop it is. So I got this cool little nifty kit. It just got it off like Amazon. It has multiple sizes and metric. So the size that we need should be an M6. So just if you want to ever verify. So if you don't really know what a heel coil is, it's more or less like a spring kind of, a threaded spring. So I got my teeny little piece. This is the actual piece that we're gonna be putting in there. So you're gonna take your original bolt, make sure it threads it in there perfectly fine, which this one does. I might actually have to get a new bolt because this one looks a little bit wonky. But for testing purposes, it really should be fine. So to do this, you gotta start by drilling out your old hole, which in the kit, if you keep it organized, it tells you what drill bit and what tap. So basically what we're going to be doing is you drill into your body and then you're going to tap it and then the heel coil is going to go in there and then you're going to break it in. So super simple. I'm going to try to show you how to do it. Now I'm going to see if I can make sure I can get this done with my pan still on because then that will eliminate me getting any metal shavings in almost anywhere except maybe on my face because I'm doing it vertical, but we're going to try to be very careful about that. So step one, get your drill bit, get a good drill, make sure it has battery. Yeah, I got three bars. We're good. And then we're going to slowly just drill up. Please make sure you don't hit any lines, you don't hit anything crazy, just be careful when you do this. Okay, so right here is the first one we're gonna do, and this one's right by the connector, so we're gonna be very clearly and make sure I don't drill a drill bit into the connector. So I'm gonna try to give you guys a couple good shots to see how to do it. So you're just gonna first take your drill bit, and then just drill into it, be very, very gentle. Step one, tighten up your drill bit. <laughs> All right, now it's drilled out. So kind of clean it, do one pass, make sure you're straight. Cause as you can see, this is cutting really effing easy. So we got that one all drilled out. Now we're gonna get our tap and get that all up. All right, next you got your tap. Once again, make sure you're going straight. And then you're just gonna tap out the hole. And this is actually adding threads for the heel coil. As you can see, little shavings are coming down. So just go slow with it. There's no rush. Sometimes kind of like go back and forth. That way you keep clearing out your threads. And then go up. Hoping I don't bottom out with this one though. I shouldn't. Okay, next thing you got it all tapped out. I just get some brake clean and kind of spray to clean any of, any of the threads and everything out. All right, now you should be ready for the actual heel coil part. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. So to do that, you have a little applicator right here that comes with the kit. And then you just put it right on your little applicator. Come on, focus. And then thread that in there and it should thread right in there. And then you sh you're almost done. If I could get it in there. There you go. I like to go until it's basically flush with my equipment that I'm going with. Right there. And then the last little piece with my kit, you just need to punch that little piece out on the top. So I'm gonna have to get a hammer for that one. So I've done it where you punch it and where you don't punch it. I don't know if it makes a difference. I've just started doing it and I never had a problem ever since then. So now that's like that, we're gonna take our original factory stuff back and hopefully it threads all in there and we have no issues. Yeah. Oh yeah, it feels tight. So I'm gonna go get an actual ratchet and go slow. 
All right, so now we're gonna check it like, oh yeah, that I can really crank on now. So I'm gonna go around and check all my other ones and find the other bad one and then do the exact same process just over and over. So we did have one more in the back that was also leaking and we were loosing. So if you look, I got this cool little rig that's just a ratcheting wrench that I put on the end of my tap to get up there. So you could kind of like, you definitely get a lot more control out of this. And see how much more easier? It's better for tighter spaces than that whole spinning one. The only disadvantage is to go back and forth, you gotta keep reversing it. But just take your time with this. This is something you really don't wanna mess up, so just go slow. You're in no rush. All right, now we got them all tightened up good. We're just gonna wipe this bad girl down a little bit. Ugh. That way we can see if it was dripping, because it was dripping a good amount where you let it sit overnight. You can see a pretty big puddle, as you saw. Like, this has all cleaner on it, but it, a pretty good puddle there. So let's wipe this whole thing down, check our fluid, and then we should be good, and then we'll check everything else. Okay, so we've been driving the car around, and now I have no more transmission leak on this bad girl. Nothing's really, like, coming out of the side, where before it wasn't too bad, but it was bad enough, I noticed. And the motor mounts, oh my god, this car is so much smoother now. Super night and day difference. Very, very happy about it. So hopefully you guys like this channel, and eventually I might upgrade to the better motor mounts from, like, Creative Steel. But that whole, like, it took so long to get here, that's what put me off of them a little bit. But I might order them now, because now I actually have good motor mounts. I don't need them right away. And I'll probably talk to them. Maybe I'll get them for, like, three or of my cars just because I have so many AMGs and for all you know I might buy another one tomorrow. Maybe I'll buy an AMG GT tomorrow or maybe I'll buy another CLK. You don't really know so it's good to have those parts just laying around whenever I need them because they're not going to go bad. It's not going to go stale on my shelf but everything else I'm super happy with it and as of right now it's been like two or three days no tranny leak no nothing so Fingers crossed that was my issue, but clearly those bolts were not going to go in anyways. But hopefully you guys like this channel. Hopefully you like that little bit of maintenance stuff. And that simple stuff that like motor mounts, they go bad on these cars. They go bad on almost every M113 just from heat and all that torque that twists it. So it's a good thing to know how to do. The ones that go on, go out mainly first are driver side. That would be left side of the motor. So if you're from a different country, it might be still left side of the motor just because when the motor torques, it pulls it. But hopefully you guys like it. Throw a like down, throw a comment down, and I'll catch you guys later.